Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Mass Effect 2. In the last episode we have been scanning around a lot and, uh, and gathered some resources, but now we found an anomaly and uh, we can actually look for a service operative that has been missing, so let's do that. Let's see what we can find. Um, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna take Garrus along with me, but I think I'm gonna take Miranda instead of Jacob because I think Jacob is not that useful to us at the moment because, um, I mean, his his ammo does additional damage against uh, against armor, which is nice. But I have basically a skill that also reduces just armor whenever I want it. I mean, pull is technically nice because it can distract enemies and and pull them somewhere. But I think it just doesn't fit too well with the group because he's a very he's very good when he can shoot enemies who are rather close. But Garrison, I would rather keep away from the enemy. So. I think we're gonna take Miranda because Miranda has certain abilities to just strip the enemy of its of uh, their defenses, which is very useful because then Garrus and I can go in for the sniper rifle shot and kill enemies, which we like very much. So I could actually finish up my operative stuff. It's actually really interesting. I was going for tactical cloak, but on second thought, yeah, that's twenty percent damage bonus for tactical cloak. Yeah, but on second thought, I think I'll evolve this first. Uh, whenever you reach the fourth rank of a of an ability, you have to choose between two different uh, sort of evolutions of this power, which is your assassin and agent. Assassin, your focus on sniper zoom is enhanced and you receive a damage bonus to all weapons and powers. So, okay, an agent, your endurance and magic fortitude reduces the research time of power or recharge time of powers and give a bonus to the other duration. Your paragon and renegade scores reach their highest levels. Actually, I don't think these additional paragon and renegade percentages are very important, especially when you import a character. Uh, that's 50% 2 seconds, that's 60% 2 seconds and a bit. 6% more weapon damage. But this has power recharge time, which is 7, uh, 6%. 5% more health. Yeah, actually it's really a tough choice. And it has power duration plus 15%, which this doesn't have. It has power damage plus 15%, interesting. Huh. So with this I can use my abilities more often, which, because Tactical Cloak does make d does make my shots do more damage, actually does something similar to, us, to Assassin, while the power damage bonus is not that important, because, I mean, of course Incinerate would do more damage and um, Energy Drain would do more damage, but I don't use them that often, so... I think even though Assassin just increases my and my weapon damage by 9%, I think it's actually better to go for Agent. Although the sniper time slowdown is also nice. Ugh, why is this so hard? I think I'm gonna go with Agent. Because I don't like Assassins. There, I said it. Um, Yeah, you can do Warp. Warp, yeah. Good. Uh, actually, I'm gonna give Miranda a different pistol because our companions. Oh, she already has it. Because our companions don't use ammunition like we do, they can fire as long as they want. It's actually useful to give them more powerful weapons which have less ammunition because they don't run out of ammunition, anyways. So, yeah, there's that. Interesting. So far. Let's get disruptor ammo and Garrus you can get... Oh, you don't have ammo. Mm, sorry. But Miranda you can go for that pistol. 
Switch up. Done. No, I don't want to use SMGs, man. I want to have my sniper rifle. SMGs. Um, there's a platinum here. No, I don't need you to do that. There's... Do -do -do. It's actually pretty nice here. Why can I sign up for some, uh... Enemies in oh. front. Hello. Uh, we're just here to... do you. Yes. Right, there's a vanguard there. Oh, I actually need to equip Miranda's skills somewhere again. I don't think I'll need energy drain for the time being, so I'll just take overload to that point. But I think I also need, don't need unity, so I can just take energy drain there. So, again. I missed. Or the hell did I miss? Gas of Shard is actually effective against barriers for some reason. I'm not sure why, but it is. Why are you going there? Nothing there for you. Okay, I'll just shoot you now. Whoa. Apparently there was something in the way. That's a little weird to do this as a sniper, just use it as a shotgun. Improvised shotgun mode. <laughs> That's fun. Bye bye. Something coming from right node scarers, right? I'm not wasting another shot for. Some enemy who's almost dead. No, no, no. A security console, so let's access the logs. Subject ID Interrogator Ca Corporal Giro, Cerberus Agent Tyrone Rawlings. Clips targeted Agent Rawlings some time ago. We know Rawlings is connected to the encrypted data we've acquired. The data could conclusively prove Cerberus' involvement in Ragna experiments. We believe Rawlings possesses a cipher that can be used to decrypt the data. Without a cipher, the data could take years for Eclipse to decode. Subject captured. Agent Rawlings proved difficult to capture. Having insinuated himself on a ship bound for the Attic and Traverse, he had won over the loyalty of a ship crew who believed him to be a human dignitary on a mission of discovery. Our own agents may not manage to disable the ship and hobble its defenses long enough to extract Agent Rawlings. We lost a lot of good men to obtain this asset. This data had better be worth the expense. Subject interrogated. The interrogation has failed. Despite some of our most advanced interrogation techniques, Agent Rawlings managed to evade our questions. When we applied more invasive methods, he proved resistance to those as well. Eventually, Agent Rawlings' resistance caused tempers to flare. We considered it unfortunate that Agent Rawlings did not live to pass on the cipher. We have men working on to decipher the encryption now. As long as we control this data, its mere existence remains a powerful tool against Cerberus. That's interesting, actually. Mm, there. There. There, and you too. Right. Whoa. Enemies? From where? There. Alright. I only have one shot left, that's... that makes me sad. Sort of. And it makes me even more sad that I missed. Now let's finish you off. Damn it. Alright, pistol time.
Uh, I have this feeling that Garrus is dead for some reason. Check on the drone, please. Come here. Oh, come on, thanks. No, you missed. Haha. Uh -huh. How did Miranda die? Also, what the heck is going on here? Must be this stupid drone, right? I think this is good enough reason to use Unity, because normally I just wouldn't, but I don't want to drag out this fight more than necessary. I'm running out of ammo, what the hell? Well, I have one shot, that's not much, but... Could you disable the drone? Why is Miranda dead again? That's, that's what, what the hell are you doing? Stay in the cover, Garrus. Oh, come on. Damn it. Die. Thank you. Well, it was unnecessary brave to just go there, but... Yeah, that I can demonstrate... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but as you see, um, our shields regenerate much slower th when we're not in cover than when we, were when we are in cover. I have no idea how our shields know when to do that, but that's how it goes. So... Whenever you want to regenerate your shields, you probably shouldn't stand around the open, find yourself some cover and just stay there. Works great in this game. So now I got ammunition. Uh, now that the mission is over. Yeah, I probably tr I probably should try to miss less because I missed several shots in the beginning of this mission, and then I just run out of ammunition, which is not so good. Mm. Right. So. I guess this is the Cerberus operative, but we already read the logs and knew that he was dead, so let's access those data logs. This computer contains the encrypted intelligence extracted from the captured Cerberus agent. The information could adversely affect Cerberus if it were ever circulated publicly. Well, in that case, let's give it to the Alliance. <laughs> Service operative Tyrone Rawlings is found dead. Encrypted data transmitted to lines for decryption. Yeah, but I think since it was transmitted through ED, I think there were some uh, some blocks in place so that I didn't uh, I didn't give the information to the alliance. But well. <laughs> Um, it was all about the message, right? So just saying here, Commander, you've received a new I don't work for you, not, not, on, not on recovering your secret information. 
Encrypt the data from Alliance Command. Commander, we got the data you sent. If this went public, it could do some serious damage to server's image. This intel would take years to decode, but it's just having but just having it is a huge win for the Alliance. Well done, Shepard. Good luck on your mission. Anderson. We didn't talk about the mission yet, Anderson. This is a fake mail, apparently. Things are quiet again. Omega Clinic desk. Uh, desk. Commander, I wanted to thank you again for saving me from those Batarians. I thought I'd seen the worst of people's anger and fear at Dr. Solos' clinic. I had no idea how much anger his work was keeping in check, how bad it really was. If not for you, I'd be dead. Thank you. The clinic is doing well. You got rid of most of the plague and I've been able to handle the rest without too much trouble. The Blue Sun's offering, are offering to take over security here. I kept the max powered on. I won't make the same mistake twice. Thanks, Daniel. That's much my pleasure, Daniel. So, we did a little, a little side mission, so let's head back to the galaxy map. And we also completely explored the Fathar system. I think I'll also explore the last system of this cluster, so that this cluster basically is completely explored for now. Fuel reserves at 50%. Just for, you know, reasons. Nearok. Nearok is a hydrogen methane gas giant where moon, whose moons were once home to Esul, a Batarian warlock who terrorized the terminal systems. Attempting to unite a pirate army under his banner, he successfully conducted a rapid blitz against 11 habitable planets. Fortunately for the rest of the galaxy, Esul's crimes caught the attention of the Spectres, who deduced his hidden location and assassinated him. Esul's empire, built on a hyper-extended army, soon came crashing down. His lost stockpiles of Element Zero have become something of a legend, and foolish spaces have spent countless amounts of time and money searching the Batala system, convinced they will be the ones that finally strike it rich. Yeah. Oh, I didn't scan it. Sorry. This has moderate scan result, but I think there's some Element Zero here, but I'm not sure. I'll just check if there's some Element Zero on this planet. But it doesn't seem like it so far. No, I disagree so far. Well, but there's more planets here, so maybe it's somewhere around, or it's just a legend. Tuna Vanuro, that's a long name. A strange island of peace in the lawless terminus of the lawless terminus systems. Tuna Varuo. Vanuro is a planet of crushing gravity but abundant life. As its ponderous name indicates, it was colonized by the Elcor with several booming industries on the planet. Hydroelectric dams and biofuels from tough, woody Agea provide much of the planet's energy. Mines explored uranium, thorium and gold, taken to space with generous use of mass effect fields. Of course, pirates target the Elcor's shipping as soon as it leaves orbit, but the Elcor's deals with mercenary companies keep away all but the most foolhardy of attackers. Interesting. So this is actually good planet to scan, and there's some element zero here. I just scan once so we, that you can listen to Edie's message because Edie always has a message when she finds some minerals first. But I'll probably not scan for any more element zero. Launching probe. In research projects, element zero is used for bio amp and omni tool upgrades which allows squad members who have biotic and tech powers to be much more effective. Right. So it's basically for upgrades which make tech abilities and sometimes also biotic abilities more effective. Something around here is a small planet here close to the sun. Lugaziri, a step above a cup Carbonaceous asteroid. Lugaziri is a planet with a carbon-heavy crust and a trace atmosphere of CO2 and helium. Its surface is cool enough to have liquid water, but it's rapidly dying, drying out as it has lost the critical mass to have a self-sustaining hydro hydraulic cycle. Nevertheless, the Vitarians have colonized the world, fo forcing slaves to work in their mines and agri-habitats. The labor is hot, endless and backbreaking even in its low-G environment. Every horror story told by slaves elsewhere in the cluster seems to be topped by one from Logaziri. The most famous is that of the slave of Silparon, who worked to death 420 slaves over the course of a galactic standard year and grounded up their bodies for compost in his greenhouses. He was eventually poisoned by his wife, but his shadow and his business model still hangs over the miserable planet. I don't really want to scan here. 
it's only moderate. That's good, because I don't want to scan here. Oops, I didn't want to go that far out. Ah, right. So we're not in council space, really. We're in the terminal system, so... Law isn't very... Well, there's not too much law here. I mean, in some worlds it may be, but it's only local and there's no... There's no pressure from above to uh, to uphold the law, so stuff like slavery can happen here. Talking about Citadel space, I think in the next episode I'm gonna return to the Citadel and have a talk with Anderson and walk around the Citadel to see how the Citadel looks like now after the Geth attacks. But I think I'm gonna do that in the next episode, so I'll see you next time. Bye bye!